Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm painting my biggest watercolor ever and I'm going to show you the whole process from the sketch to the end result. First of all, if you're new here, please subscribe. I post art videos whenever I can. Today I'm doing a watercolor based on some Japanese food that I like. First of all, I did a bunch of thumbnails in my sketchbook just to have a better idea of which element I would include in this painting and of the composition. After I chose my thumbnail, I found some references online and I drew some sketches in my sketchbook to have a better idea of what every element would look like and then I drew the final sketch and colors in Procreate. I did the sketch in Procreate because I wanted to be able to try out different composition, move things around until I get my final sketch. During this sketching process, I ended up removing some elements and simplifying my sketch. I was also able to try out different color palettes, which was really good because usually I kind of go with the flow. I'm pretty successful in my color choices, I think, in general. But this time I really wanted to plan the whole thing. This was a big project for me, so I wanted to make sure everything would go well. And in fact, the first color palette that I tried, I ended up not liking too much. I'm really glad that I got a do-over in Procreate and I loved the second color palette so much. The other nice thing about that is that now I have a digital version, so it's going to be really easy for me to make some prints. When I decided on a final sketch, I sent the sketch layer in Photoshop so I could resize it for the right dimensions for my painting and then I printed it out. Now you see me transferring my sketch onto the watercolor paper. I use a sheet of carbon paper to transfer my sketch. You have to be really careful not to press too hard when you transfer if you don't want to see the outlines through the paint. And as I found out, you can't really erase on this paper too, so you won't see it, but there was a line that I, I would have liked to erase that I couldn't. So you have to be very careful. I put the carbon paper in between the watercolor paper and the sketch I printed. Before using the carbon paper, make sure you test it first because there's a side that transfers and a side that doesn't. I learned it the hard way after spending a lot of time trying to transfer a sketch onto my watercolor paper and I found out that I used the wrong side and nothing transferred. So I had to start all over again, which sucked. <laughs> I sometimes use a colored pencil to trace on top of my sketch so I can see where I went and I make sure I don't go over the same area twice. This time I didn't do that because each element was separate from the other so it was easy for me to remember what I traced and what I didn't. I could have pressed harder with my pencil because I planned on going over it with my pit artist pen but I'm still trying to figure out how much pressure to apply for a subtle result, so I figured this would be good practice for me. Well, now the transfer is done and we are outlining with ink. We are doing that because I knew I wanted a more graphic look, something more stylized with very present outlines. So that's why I went over the sketch with ink. This was a lot of fun to do, but it took a lot of time. At this point, I was ready to start painting. I was really excited for it. So I kind of wanted this part to go a bit faster, but you have to remember that sketching is part of the fun. I was wondering if the ink from the pen would reactivate with the watercolors on top. Sometimes I put a lot of water and this was a bit of a gamble. I tested putting water on top of this pen on another sheet and it didn't reactivate, but you never know. In the end, as you'll see, the ink didn't reactivate, so that's good. I think I would have cried. I really like doing all the little details in this sketch. I'm used of using this pen on a smooth surface paper, but it worked pretty well on this rougher paper. Here are some close-up shots of the sketch. We are almost ready to start painting. But first we have to talk about the color palette. For this painting, I decided I wanted a limited color palette. 
I tried two different versions in Procreate and I settled for the warmer one, the one with all the orange and the red colors. I have a lot of paint colors, so I picked the ones that I felt would resemble the colors I chose in Procreate. I put them on my table. You'll see that I picked two blues, even though there's no blue in my reference image. I thought I might mix a yellow and a blue to get a green, but in the end, I found that I had the perfect green color already, so I put the blues away and I didn't use them. I swatched each color. Next to the swatch, I wrote the name of the color and what part of the painting I would use it for. I knew finishing this painting would most likely take a couple of days, so I didn't want to forget which color I swatched and which color I planned for which part of the painting. Here's an overview of the colors I plan on using. You can see that I'm not using the phthalo blue and a green. Having a pre-selection of colors made the painting, I think, a bit more cohesive because all the colors fit with one another. We are finally starting with our painting. I decided to start with the background because I'm using a pale color. I don't mind putting it everywhere because the colors I'm going to use for the food are darker than this background color. The only place that was important not to cover was the rice and the eggs because I wanted them to stay white. I still tried not to cover the main elements, but the long mushrooms were a bit hard to contour, so I just painted over them. I started with a water layer, so this way the colors would spread better. You can't really see the background color right now because it's kind of a yellowish white, but I swear I'm applying color right now. And now I'm painting the swirly lines. Like I planned my colors, I planned the order in which I would paint each element. With watercolor, I like painting from light to dark. And if I paint an area, I make sure it's dry before I paint something that's right next to it, so the paint won't spread. I started with the palest color, which was the white of the nigiri and the eggs. Maybe I just could have left them white like the paper. That would have been an option, but I didn't do that. When that was dry, I put down the first layer for the fish and then I started working on the shiitake. The good thing about this painting is that most elements were separated from one another, so I could just move from one element to another while waiting for my paint to dry. I continued working on the fish part of the sushis, and since the mushrooms and the inside of the bowl were the same color, I painted them as well. I think painting the nori was my favorite part. This is due to the color I use, which is dusk yellow. The color was perfect for nori seaweed and the granulation. Oh, it looked exactly like the texture of nori. You know, like nori seaweeds are a bit like rough. They look like they have little scales and the granulation of this color replicated that exactly. So this is a wonderful discovery for me and I'll try to use this color more in my future paintings. I didn't plan on doing the nori in the ramen bowl right away, but I wanted to clean up my mixing palette and I didn't want to waste the dusk yellow I still had on it, so I decided to paint the nori from the ramen bowl. 
Now we are in the most stressful part, the fish. I say it's stressful because it's unpredictable. I was using a different technique than the other elements and I wasn't 100% sure of how it would go, so that's why I was a little bit stressed out. First I used some masking fluid and I waited for it to dry. First I put a layer of water. I wanted to create a gradient in the fish and I thought that with the first layer of water the colors would mix better and the gradient would be smoother. So you can see me now applying colors to create a gradient. I really tried to replicate the colors in my reference image. I quickly ran into some problems though. As you can see, the paper warped and the paint created puddles in some areas. I didn't expect that at all because it never happened to me with this kind of paper. I don't know if it happened because I put more water than the usual, which I don't know about that. I usually put a lot of water and it doesn't happen. Or did it happen because the quality of the 16 by 20 inches paper is different than the 11 by 14 inches paper that I'm used to? I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be the same quality, but I'll have to investigate. You might be wondering why I decided to do a whole painting on Japanese food. First of all, one thing to know about me is that I love Japanese food. I love sushi, of course, ramen, of course, onigiri, takoyaki, okonomiyaki, and sake. These are pretty much my favorite Japanese foods. Well, I don't know if sake counts as food, but I still love it. <laughs> I was so lucky to be able to go to Japan in 2017 for three whole months. I was able to explore a lot, to do some really cool hikes, to taste some different foods, to visit different neighborhoods and different cities. Of course, I would love to go again because I kind of stayed in the Tokyo region, but that's the backstory pretty much. So it kind of strengthened my love for Japanese food. And I really wanted to do a poster style illustration of these food items. At first, I wanted to put as many food items as I could in this illustration. But during my sketching process, I just realized that the composition would be better, would flow better with less elements in it. That's why I decided to add some mushrooms too, because they are a big part of the Japanese food, they are a big part of the broth making, and I just love mushrooms. So here's why I decided to do this painting. While my first fish layer dried, I worked on the ramen. I then went back to the fish and did a second layer, being careful to put less water this time. The colors pulled a bit less, but there were sharper lines between each color, which I wasn't really a fan of. I really wanted the gradient to flow. Here you can see me removing the masking fluid of these vegetables in the ramen bowl. I forget what they're called. The fish was dried, so I started working on its face. I struggled with this part too, because I couldn't really make it match with the rest of the body. It was always too yellow or too warm, and you'll see me trying to fix it a lot. I alternated between its face and its body.
this point, I decided to mix some titanium white with the face colors so it would be paler and hopefully less warm. The thing with titanium white is that it's a pretty opaque color, so it covered the sketch and I had to fix that after. See how opaque it just got? I tried adding other colors on top, which helped with the color, but not with the opacity. I decided to let it dry for now and go back to it later. I decided to touch up the ramen and the bowl, I added some details, and I did the same with the mushrooms. went back to the face. I decided to add a little bit of water to lift the paint in some areas and it helped a lot. It also mixed the colors even more and it became less opaque, so I like that result very much. We can see the outlines underneath much better. I removed the masking fluid from the fish and painted its bright orange scales. Then, it was time to add some details in the painting. I loved adding highlights, shadows, pops of colors everywhere. Working on the final details is always so much fun. One thing I wanted to do before calling this painting done was going over some of the outlines. As you've seen, some paint layers were a bit more opaque than others, so the outlines didn't show as much in these areas. So now you can see me going back over them. Oh, and I forgot this part, probably because it was so scary. In my Procreate sketch, I drew these squiggly lines over the background. 
I thought it really added something to the illustration and I debated for the longest time on if I would add them to this painting or not. The thing is that I couldn't practice beforehand and I couldn't trace the first layer with the pencil because I didn't want to erase on top of my paint. Also, I wasn't sure that I could trace exactly on top of my pencil, so I would have to erase probably. After hesitating a lot, I decided that these squiggly lines would really add something to the painting, so I decided to do them. You can see that my first set of squiggly lines isn't as confident as the others. I don't really like this first set of lines, but I'm willing to look past it. Now it's the satisfying time of removing the tape. You can now see the background color better. See, I didn't lie, I really put some color there. In my sketch, I didn't leave the contour white. It was this beautiful rust color which added more depth to the artwork in my opinion. It makes it look like a poster which really works with this art style. I decided to recreate it in this painting. The last thing to do was to cut out this extra paper and we are done! It's my biggest painting yet. It's a 15 by 20 inches and it's all watercolor except for the outlines. It was my first time doing a colored frame. Usually I leave it white. It's really cute. I like it. And I have no idea where to put it because it's, it's so big. I don't have a frame for it. So I think I'm going to put it in here on the top shelf and it's going to stay there until I figure out what to do with it. But I love it. I love the face of the fish. He looks so traumatized. I think he's not used of having a ramen bowl on his back. I guess some fish are not used of working. I would say the only thing that wasn't that fun is that I couldn't really sit down while painting because of my filming setup and because sometimes it was just too far for me so it didn't make any sense to sit down. So after a couple hours of painting, sometimes my back hurt a little bit, my neck hurt a little bit, but it was all worth it. But that makes me wonder how painters that, you know the painters that paint these huge paintings, how, how do they do it? On this questioning, I'm going to leave you here. So if you like this video, please leave me a like below, leave me a comment. And if you didn't subscribe yet, please do. It would make me so happy. Take care and I'll see you next time. Namaste.